What's going on guys? Um, just want to do a little video here. Um, quick short recap. We're coming off of uh, a big weekend of cards. Uh, a lot of the boys uh, went to Regina to fire in some tournaments and uh, play some cash games. So um, yeah, and then we're uh, also going to dive into a fun hand. <laughs> I found myself bluffing with the best possible hand because I had blockers again and I got picked off on the river again. Uh, but we'll dive into it here. Uh, yeah, so this is Casino Regina. If you uh, take a look on the website here, a bunch of different tournaments. Um, I only played one. I think this one's the Wednesday. Here's Wednesday. Sorry, the other one was a satellite. Um, this was a Thursday. Uh, but lots and lots of Winnipeg players there. Tons and tons. Uh, I played this one, I believe, on the Friday lasted like eight and a half hours <laughs> um and then the main event the 1100 dollars main event on saturday uh one of our guys from our home game jonathan boyer uh finished fourth uh took it down uh nice deep run so that's awesome congratulations john but uh yeah it was uh it was a lot of fun not much sleep i mean four hours a night maybe because you just get up go and then play all night right so um, I think I got a couple pictures here. Who's that ugly guy? <laughs> uh, I was with Willie. We, uh, we drove down in this pimp and ride in the Range Rover. A few chips from, uh, Casino Regina. The chips actually all had, like, a lot of cracks in them. And you ended up being able to break a ton of them. And they have all different kinds of, like, uh, whoops, denominations. Um, like your fives. There's four different types of fives from different things they've done over the years. Four different types of ones. Kind of really weird. I don't know. Um, that's the chip racks we use. Looks kind of cheap. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, the tables we played on, like I get it. They had to have tons and tons of tables. Uh, but they were pretty cheap. I mean, folding legs, this huge, huge shuffler, which kind of like puts a dent in the table. And your chips are on a slant and stuff. Wasn't the greatest. Um, just a bunch of random pictures here. A little chip porn for you. <laughs> I think that's what they call it. Um, this was a gift voucher. I guess if you registered the tournament, you could hand in this gift voucher and get, like, uh, I don't know, a hoodie or something that said, like, Harvest Classic on it. It was just a black hoodie. I never ended up uh, taking it. I just passed on my hoodie to uh, a buddy of mine and said, You can have it. It's yours. Uh, you get your receipt for your tournaments. And, uh, yeah. This is the first minute of the tournament. Here we go. Just a couple shots of the screen. Getting knockouts. Got 100 bucks a knockout for the tournament I played. Breakfast, real cool spot for this breakfast. It was, like, in a rail car. Like, uh, picture here, yeah. So kind of neat. Uh, cheap breakfast, good stuff. Kind of powered up, uh... Fueled up there twice, I think, for uh, starting our day. And then, yeah, the chairs were so shitty. You had to have, like, seat cushions. So <laughs> they had seat cushions, and that was the chair. So uncomfortable. Like, my basement setup is better. But, uh, okay. um, and that's sort of the last slide here, I think. Only reason I wanted to do it is uh, just to let you know we played, like, three days. Like, flew in Thursday or drove in Thursday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, Sunday was kind of everyone came, came back home. But in Winnipeg or Manitoba here, it's a stat holiday, Remembrance Day, right? So we had Monday off <laughs> with one day of recovery. So we fired up another home game and uh, jumped in the action. And this is where I'm going to switch slides here for you. And you can see um, a hand developing. We had one of the crazier sessions I think we've had in a long time. Uh, so many all-ins and swings, and we're doing double board bomb pots, and uh, the action was just great. Like, a shorter session, maybe six, seven hours or whatever it was, uh, but so many chips flying around the table. Uh, we're animals, can't get enough, so. Uh, as usual, I've got my hand on loop here, and uh, here, let's keep this off. I have to excuse the hair. I'm a tired. Um, I have pocket fives in a limped pot. 
which was very, very interesting. And you'll see it was actually a really big pot, I think, on 5k. Um, Four-way limp, double straddled to 20, and I think five of us called. So there's 100 bucks in the middle on the flop. And I get one of the best flops that I can see with 5-5. Five, five. And out of the blinds... I'm check raising this board actually a pretty big percentage of the time, right? I could have pocket threes, pocket fours, pocket sevens, three, four suited, seven, four suited. Uh, I could flop five, six, right? But I have a bunch of check raising hands that I'm happy to, you know, um, check raise with. But you need to have some bluffing hands as well. And the hand that I have, five, five, is a fantastic hand to do it with because the nuts is 5-6 on 3-4-7. It's very hard for your opponent to have 5-6 if you've got two fives in your hand. Um, so I recognized that instantly, and of course I went, let's go for it again. <laughs> um, so right here, I check, and you can see Matt leads out for around 60 bucks. And most of the time, I think he's just leading a 7. Um... That's about it. He could have two pair. It, it's, I mean, we're both kind of in the blinds, essentially, with the straddle. But I think he's leading a seven there a lot. Uh, and then Willie calls, and then Carl calls, and I just said, you know what, I'm check-raising everyone. So it was like 60, 60, 60, and then I make it 250. Uh, Matt gets out of the way, Willie gets out of the way, and then Carl calls again. And... Uh, the turn is actually a deuce, which is still a really, really good card. And I'm still trying to figure out what Carl has that he's limping on the button with. I mean, he could be limping threes or limping fours, but I just really don't think he's limping sevens. Like, on the button, Carl's aggressive enough to, like, open up sevens and use his position. Uh, so I don't think he has sevens. But definitely, if you want to kind of play it more cautious with threes and fours, we are ridiculously deep stacked. Uh, for most of us. And, uh, all right, so I check raise, like, what calls on the flop? Like, he could have had 3-4 suited. He could have 4-5 suited. He could have 6-7 suited. All those hands are, are essentially going to call uh, a check raise there. Like, I mean, you've, you've got a pair and a gutter. Um, Ace-5 has, like, a double gutter, right? Any deuce or any six gives Carl, essentially, um, a straight. So there's a lot of hands that he can continue with. It's just, I really don't think he has 5-6 because I have two fives in my hand. Uh, so when I check raise, I knew I could move Matt off of 7 or whoever's calling off of a 7 quite easily. And I had planned on barreling, even if the turn in the river were like a jack or a queen or a, like... I'm saying I have the straight or a set with, with the line that I took. Uh, so when the deuce comes on the turn, I I just size up. I bet 425 into, I think it was 700 and change there. Um, really kind of setting up my river shove. I mean, there are some hands um, that could backdoor into diamonds. That's definitely possible. Uh, and I put a bunch of the ranges in here. You can see in the bottom left corner. Um, let's let this catch up. 250. Bold. Bold. Oh. So yeah, the deuce comes, and nothing should change on that texture. So I bet 425. Carl calls. And then I bet... I know, I remember I had just under 1800. Uh, so I jam the river for like 1800 bucks, and Carl uh, snap called. I remember just sitting there like, okay, I'm gonna just sort of put my head down and time to get stoic and not move. I didn't even get a chance to kind of look down. The, Carl had already... I didn't even realize he'd already flicked in one chip to call. <laughs> uh, because he did flop the absolute nuts. He flopped the nuts. So he limped the old 5-6 offsuit and just uh, completely got rewarded. But I do have to give him props for flat calling every single street and letting me barrel off. Because a lot of guys end up like getting excited or wanting to build a pot. Like, oh my god, let's, you know, when do I let the cat out of the bag? Like, the gig's up. I'm, I'm gonna take control of this pot now and, and make sure all the money gets in, right? But I guess, like, we've played a fair bit, and he knew I was gonna aggressive enough, and when I'm check-raising big into four players and then bombing the turn, 
I guess you can realize that, hey, Trev must really have something here. Like, let him barrel it all off. And now maybe if I have a set, I mean, money goes in anyways, but uh, the fact that I chose 5-5, five, five, which is like the best hand for blockers, uh, and are all just flat called every single street. So, so props, Carl. Uh, well played. I mean, uh, a lot of guys just get too carried away. Because if you would have jammed on me on the turn, which isn't terrible, uh, I think I have to let it go, right? I'm clearly bluffing. And the gig's up. So if you would have jammed or, you know, took, taken control of the, the betting on the turn, then you lose money. You got the absolute maximum by letting me just uh, unload the clip, right? So... Uh, I really like how you played the hand check call. Uh, a lot of guys aren't disciplined enough to do that, so that's uh, that's well played. But yeah, just thought I'd show an example of uh, how to how to recognize good spots for uh, turning your hand into a bluff. Like you can't show down, you know. You lose to a seven, you lose to you know so many other things. So you can quite credibly rep five six or a set. Um, unfortunately, Carl did have the one hand, <laughs> which I find hilarious. Um, it's really hard to get your opponent to fold if you're represent if the hand you're representing is actually in your opponent's hand. I was literally trying to represent 5-6, <laughs> but it was in Carl's hand. So, <laughs> uh, it's definitely not going to get through. And even if he had a set, like, I mean, that puts a ton of pressure and it says, hey, I'm willing to stack off. So either I have five six or a bigger set, so it still puts a ton of pressure on uh, on a set um, and two pair. Like if he has three four suited, five six suited, four seven suited, like um, those hands have a ton of ton of trouble calling, right? So anyway, just thought I'd show you. It was absolutely bananas. Great game. Lots of chips flying around. Uh, I got in deep for around four k, I think, early. And uh, still ended up a winner on the session. I think we we won like a $7,800 three-way all-in bomb pot. Uh, just, yeah, so kind of crazy. Still ended up a $3,800 profit by the end of the night. But uh, great game, lots of fun. And we, uh, we played it on this past Monday, like yesterday, just uh, even after a full weekend of cards. So <laughs> guys can't get enough. But... Uh, Anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. Um, another example of uh, trying to turn your hand into a bluff using really good cards with card removal blocker concepts. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed it. I will make another video. Uh, hopefully, there's uh, soon. Hopefully, there's some more.